Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Hack and in this video we'll be presenting the best companion builds for ESO's new companions coming with the High Isle chapter that's Ember and Isabel. We'll review the best possible setups for tank, healer, and DPS builds for these two newest ESO companions, including the best skills, gear weights, and gear traits to make your companions truly powerful. Timestamps are below if you want to skip ahead to a build or a specific companion. And keep in mind, we also have detailed written guides over on our website, that's hacktheminotaur.com. So check the links below for those if you're interested. And that said, let's jump right into the video. First up, let's talk about Ember as a tank build. Ember's skill set is closest to the Sorcerer class, which you would think might not be ideal for tanking, but Ember's skills are actually quite powerful for all roles, including tanking, healing, or playing DPS. On the tanking side, Ember has excellent damage reduction skills, self and group healing, damage shields, and some pretty nice utility skills as well, including immobilizations and cooldown reduction. So if you're looking for a competent tank that can also provide some healing or damage or even utility, then Ember is going to be a nice option for that. Talk about the gear setup for Ember first. Going with one-handed shield, obviously, for a tank setup. You get the taunt option plus the most defense. And speaking of defense, we will want all heavy armor, seven pieces of heavy if you can get it. Our traits here are going to be a mixture of Quicken for the reduced cooldowns, as well as Vigorous for the increased max health. I think I'm running about five Vigorous traits, everything else Quicken, but you can mix and match those as you pick up those pieces. Let's talk about skills next. Starting with a very powerful buff called Hurricane Visage. It does AoE shock damage as you'd expect from a sorcerer, but it also reduces her damage taken by 20%, which is massive, uh, especially for a tank setup. You can see we have a 10 second cooldown with our quick and trait, which is not bad. Then of course we have Provoke from the one-handed shield skill line. You will want this, especially if you're fighting against bosses. This makes sure Ember can hold aggro pretty good. And then one more from the one-handed shield skill line. This is On Guard, which is a damage shield, absorbs up to 25% of her max health. Very quick cooldown on this, so this is a very important skill for her survival, especially tanking against harder bosses. Next up is Ember's version of a burst heal called Quick Fix. This is from the Playful Schemer skill line. Uh, she'll get this pretty early, and it's a nice burst heal, about 7k depending on your traits. And then finally, Entomb. This is a really interesting skill. This is going to immobilize enemies in front of you, which obviously is not going to work on bosses, but you get a powerful heal over time effect regardless uh, of whether the immobilize works or not. So about 11k health over 8 seconds is very good. Combined with her burst heal and damage shield and damage reduction, she basically is very, very hard to take down with this particular setup. Now, as far as the ultimate, there's obviously only one ultimate available. Raging Storm is very similar to the Destruction Staff ultimate. AoE damage does a little bit of bonus execute damage as well, so it's nice for a little extra boost of damage, but you really don't need to worry about it on a tank setup. Now, another really good skill is this one, Shared Wards. This is a group damage shield, which also gives you a small heal over time effect. So if you want Ember to have a little bit more group utility, protecting your group and also giving you some extra heals, then uh, Shared Ward, you want to substitute that somewhere in your build. For our second build, we're going to be looking at Isabel set up as a tank companion. Isabel will be another fantastic option for this style of companion build. I'd say that more than any companion so far, she really specializes in healing over time effects, as well as off healing abilities due to those skills being very similar to the Templar class. So you can basically have multiple overlapping heals active, which ensures her survivability while also putting out area heals at the same time. Let's say that Isabel probably has less utility than Ember, but she also has greater healing. So it kind of depends on which way you want to go. For gear, again, we're using one hand and shield. I think that's probably the way to go for a companion tank. Combine that with seven pieces of heavy armor. If you can get those, that's going to be essential. And then the two main traits that I recommend for tanks is going to be a mix of Quickened for the cooldown reduction and then Vigorous for the max health bonus. Those are my two favorite traits overall. Take a look at the skills next, starting with Provoke. This is our one handed shield taunt. Definitely want that to make sure she maintains aggro. Then Solar Ward. This comes from the Brilliant Shield skill line. And this is a pretty powerful skill, honestly. It reduces her incoming damage by 20%, which is massive. Plus, it gives her a damage shield, so that's even more damage absorption, up to 12.5%. 
of her max health. So the more vigorous traits you give her, the uh, stronger that shield size is. So this is a really great defensive skill overall. And we're going to combine that with extra heals from a skill called Holy Ground. This comes from Healing Grace. And uh, this is a nice heal over time effect, almost 2k health every two seconds. Plus it does apply a really large snare to the ground as well. So it's good for mob control. Then I do recommend still on guard from the one hand and shield skill line. This is just another strong damage shield absorbing up to 25% of her max health for this one. Then we've got Blessed Sacrament. This is comes this comes from the Healing Grace skill line as well. This is a small heal plus a heal over time component. She can use this on herself or you. Uh, and it does have a very short cooldown, only about six seconds with those quicken traits. So it's really good for some quick healing. Finally, Bane Slayer is the ultimate. Not really that useful for a tank setup. Bastion's ultimate is probably the best there because his stuns. This one is just more straight up damage. Uh, it does sort of detonate for bonus damage, but I think it just looks really cool. Probably one of the best companion ultimates uh, as far as how it looks. Build number three is going to be Ember as a DPS. Now, you can set up Ember using lots of different weapons. Since she's a sorcerer, for example, many players will default to having her use a destruction staff, but my favorite personally, especially for single target damage, is to have her use a bow. The bow is a very powerful companion weapon and does a lot of damage. Of course, her companion ultimate is an AoE skill that does excellent damage, and her passives result in even more damage as well. So Ember, I think, is actually maybe the most damaging companion I've found so far if you pick the right skills and traits. As far as gear, we have the Companion's Bow, which we mentioned. Aggressive is going to be the ideal trait for this because this does increase damage done. As far as armor, you will want medium armor. That's because the medium armor passes for Companion also increase your damage. And again, as many of the aggressive traits you can get, whether it's your weapon, your armor, your jewelry for the Companion, that is going to increase your overall damage. So that should be your goal on this particular setup. Starting with skills, this is a bow setup. So we've got Viper's Bite. This is actually maybe the strongest companion damage skill in the game. You can check out the tooltip here. So bow, uh, it's the last ability here. Viper's Bite, 17k poison damage over 8 seconds is the dot, plus about 6,000 upfront damage. Really strong. Then we're mixing in Piercing Arrow. That's sort of the snipe ability. For companions, so another very powerful single target damage skill. Then we're mixing in Crystal Blast. This is another equally powerful single target skill. This is from the Lightning Caller. So her, her kind of sorcerer-like abilities. This is doing about 11k magic damage. Mixing that in with Starfall, another single target damage ability. So you can see what the focus is here on this setup. And I've also chosen mostly sort of the 8 second cooldown abilities. You don't want these to be too long uh, because it's going to lower your DPS overall. And then our last normal ability is going to be Sniping Silver. Again, about 11k single target damage. It does deal bonus damage against undead, uh, Daedra, or werewolves, though. And what other skills can you use? Maybe if you don't have those guild skills unlocked yet. Well, Shocking Burst is going to be great for AoE. That's some bonus shock damage and damage over time, so that's a really powerful skill. You can also do some utility. Ember is great for that in Tomb going to be a nice immobilization plus a pretty strong heal over time to sort of keep her health topped off that's a great option as well and finally the ultimate i did mention this earlier it does really good aoe damage so again if you want to spec ember for more of the aoe setup throw in some of those aoe abilities hopefully she gets that ultimate to go off uh, and then her damage will be pretty strong Build number four is going to be isabel as a melee dps now i did find that isabel does have some flexibility in terms of a damage build, because you can mix in those healing skills that we talked about earlier that are very Templar-like. So if you need some extra healing for yourself or for your group, but you also want damage, Isabel is going to be a great option. Or you can just spec her for pure damage if you prefer. Now on this particular setup for Isabel, I decided to go with Dual Wield because you can easily switch between AoE and single target damage. And she also gets some nice damage reduction with the Razor Cloak skill. Now, in terms of the gear, again, two one-handed weapons. It does not matter which weapons you get. Uh, companions do not benefit from weapon passives, so you could get an axe, dagger, sword, mace. Doesn't matter. Uh, medium armor, again, because that does have the strongest damage passives. And aggressive, again, as the trait, because that results in the most companion damage. That would be ideal. Now, in terms of the skills here, I did go with her sort of jabs clone called Penetrating Strikes, which is a very strong ability. Does have a long cooldown, which isn't great. 
But the fact that this can do AoE damage, I think it does make it worth it. Plus, it's it's just jabs. You gotta have jabs on a Templar. Next up, Swift Assault. This comes from the dual wield skill line, and it's very similar to the uh, Penetrating Strike skill, being that channeled effect. It does a good amount of damage, and it has a fairly short cooldown as well, only about 8 seconds, which is what you want. Next up is Sunbrand. I thought this was a very powerful single target dot and direct damage effect. And then one more dual wield skill I mentioned, Razor Cape. This does actually very good AoE damage, but also you get that 20% damage reduction for your companion. So that's going to help her stay alive in a lot of melee situations where maybe she's getting hit from AoE damage. That should help a lot. And then finally, just an easy damage ability you can pick if you have the Mage's Guild unlocked. Just do one of those Mage's Guild dailies and you'll get Starfall. This is a great single target damage skill. Of course, we already talked about Bane Slayer, which is actually a pretty good damage skill. Looks amazing. Gives you some bonus damage as well. So not bad for a DPS setup. Now, this is more of a like a single target damage, like a boss build. If you are doing something else like your grinding experience or you're clearing your way through dungeons, I would slot a few more AoE skills. For example, a Swift Assault, I would substitute this actually for the other dual wield ability called Spinning Steel. This is basically the Steel Tornado type skill that does AoE damage and also execute damage. So it is quite nice. Uh, for Sunbrand, you could also slot in Spear of Light. This is actually an AoE stun. So it's going to knock down enemies in the area, which is quite helpful as well. That way they can't damage you or Isabel. And this does have a fairly big radius as well. 15 by 10 meter knockdown is actually pretty effective. Our next build is going to be Ember as a healer. And Ember being a sorcerer style companion actually fits the healer build quite well especially when you stack heals from either the Restoration Staff or Mage's Guild, along with her own Damage Shield skills and Burst Heal. So if you're looking for a unique companion healer with plenty of options for utility, then Ember is definitely your go-to setup. For equipment, obviously you want to start with the Restoration Staff. I've gone with the Quicken trait as well for most of my pieces here to reduce those cooldowns. Light Armor is going to be the most effective armor weight for your companion because that does increase their healing potential, so as many light armor pieces as you can will be the most beneficial. In terms of skills, we're going to go right to the Restoration Staff. You'll want to unlock that early. Pick up Rejuvenation, the first skill here. This is a very solid heal over time, and you can see with those Quicken Traits, we have a basically almost 100% uptime on that, which is awesome. Of course, we want to stack that with Reverse Entropy from the Mages Guild. That's the second ability here, and this is an even stronger heal over time with again that about eight second cooldown. So you're stacking both of those for a lot of extra healing coming in every second. On top of that, we're going to use her uh, damage shield ability, which is called Shared Wards. This is a damage shield for her and yourself, all your allies, plus a small heal over time. Not amazing, but it does add up. It stacks with the rest of our healing. Quick Fix is gonna be your burst heal. You can see this has a very short cooldown, only five and a half seconds with those Quicken Traits, and a pretty strong heal as well using Light Armor, so that is good. And then our last normal ability here is kind of flexible. I went for the more damage shield approach. Skeletal Aegis from the Undaunted skill line gives you a very strong damage shield, 50% of your max health for six seconds, though it does have a long cooldown, about 25 seconds. So it's more for emergencies, I would say. You could choose to put more damaging abilities in this spot, something like Shocking Burst. You could even do more utility, and Tomb is a great Immobilize plus a heal for Ember. That's a good option as well. Or another good option for emergencies, I would check out Mystic Siphon if you've got the Restoration Staff maxed out. This gets you a 26k damage shield every 5 seconds, but you do need to be below 25% health. Last but certainly not least, we have Isabel as the Healer Companion. Isabel being a Templar fits right into the healing role very easily. You'll find she has plenty of heal over time options, some burst healing, some heals which also do damage, some stick to the ground, and with the right rotation and timing, you'll be nearly unkillable with all the stacked heal over time effects she's able to produce. As far as her equipment, again, Restoration Staff to start. We're going with full seven light armor pieces that does buff your healing and then quickened is my preferred trait. Basically, this allows you to keep up all of your effects as much as possible so you can overlap and stack those heals. Here's that light armor passive, by the way. Flow increases your healing done by 1% for each piece of light armor, so 7% bonus to your healing. 
means you don't really have to worry about other traits. Your healing is quite strong on the spilled. First skill again is going to be Rejuvenation. That's from the Restoration Staff skill line. Very strong heal over time. Uh, you can see with her passive cooldown, she's actually under the 8 second mark there. So you'll have that up 100% of the time. And then Mending Incantation, going with a more defensive option for this build. This gives us 7,000 spell and physical resistance, plus a little mini burst heal. Uh, about 10 second cooldown on that, so you'll have that armor up most of the fight. Which is a great, unique buff that you can get from your companions. Next up in the Healing Grace skill line, we have Beam of Reproach. This is that sort of damage style Templar ability that also heals you back. You can see you get about 1k heal every 2 seconds for 8 seconds. And less than 8 second cooldown there with our traits, which is really good. Then we're going to use Holy Ground. This is that ground-based AoE heal over time effect. Bit stronger, over 2k health every 2 seconds, plus a nice AoE snare for enemies in the area. And finally, Blessed Sacrament. This is kind of like a mini burst heal combined with a heal over time, uh, that 8 second heal over time. So you can see we have about 4 heal over times running. And then of course, Bane Slayer, the ultimate. We've talked about this before. Pretty powerful damage option uh, for Isabel. Now, in terms of other skills you might consider using, Mystic Fortress is very good for emergencies. You could replace one of your heals with this. Gives you that huge damage shield, but you do have to be under 25% health. And with that said, that's going to wrap up our Companions build update for the High Isle chapter. Six new Companion builds in all. Tons of great options for tank, healer, and DPS setups for your Companion. So hopefully you found that helpful and informative. If you did, do me a favor, crush that like button, and make sure you're subscribed. We have much more High Isle videos and builds coming out soon. Keep an eye out for those. If you have any questions on companions, on companion builds, we do have a very detailed guide section over on the website. That's hackthemunitar.com. I'll have links for that down in the description, but we do have written guides for all six of these companion builds. Where to find each companion, their full skill, loadout, how to get the best gear, how to level up companions quickly, tons of resources there. So make sure you check those out. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.